kind of removed from home a little bit. For the people in our first lesson that intern Rita read for us, these were people who were in exile, and for 50 years they had been there until finally uh, Cyrus, the king of Persia, realizes the people might have actually served him better if they were able to go home. And so they go home and he in, in, even instructs them to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And I'm sure when they got there, home didn't look as much like home as they thought it would because things were so different there. But they still went about the task of rebuilding and understand what it meant to be together. Other times, other things can separate us. We read in our gospel reading about the demoniac who was really removed from his home just because there was this barrier of, of mental illness that prevented him from really being able to fully be a part of that home life. And so he was removed from that and probably so wanted to be there. We hear that in other stories with the 10 lepers that Jesus heals and they're able to return home. We know that homecomings can just fill us with, with so much life and energy that we will know these experiences that have been away from us for a while. And so that's what a little bit of today is about. It's about knowing what that homecoming experience is and knowing it's still just a little bit different and still knowing there are some people who would rather be still at home during this time of worship, engaged in worship in their, in their own space because that just feels safer yet in these days. This is a part of our life even now is to know this very experience for us. And so now when we hear in this gospel reading that Jesus comes to this demoniac and heals him of of the legions, the demons that possessed him, and they are, in a sense, eradicated, that now something is going to happen. And the words that Jesus shares with him are so simple. It's the words that we were saying to ourselves for the past year or so, a, a couple of months ago, when can we finally be together again? And when can we have that experience? And as we continue to grow into that experience, this is the words that Jesus had shared with that man. It's right there in uh, verse, uh, verse um, 19, where Jesus says to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. And so the man starts to head home. You'd have to believe that the first thing on his mind would be, I got to get home. I got to get home to my friends, to my family. I have to share with them what has happened. But something changed along the way. As he was heading for home, something changed was stirred in his spirit that was different. And we may never have a more beautiful example of somebody disobeying Jesus than we have with this man. Because he was told to go home, and instead we hear that he went out to the Decapolis. All right, so what's a Decapolis? Who knows what a Decapolis is? Uh, yeah, Rita and Nate raising their hands. A couple of, oh, Tom back here. Pastor Tom knows. And somebody in the back who was here for the first service. If you don't know what a decapolis is, I will explain it for you. So two simple words, deca, which is ten, and polis, which is city. So this is a region of ten cities. Now Jesus said to this man, go home. But he doesn't go home. Instead, he goes out to a region of ten cities. And what Jesus had originally told him to do was go home and just tell the people what happened to you. But that's not what this man does either. Instead of going home, he goes to ten cities. But he doesn't just tell people what happened to him. He proclaims what happened to him. It's as if this message of homecoming can't be contained. The joy that we might share here together could never be something that gets held here because when you experience that kind of joy, you have to find a way to share it to the world. So what kind of joy do we find in our experience right here? 
In some ways, it's the same way that the ten lepers, that the demoniacs, that the people in exile found. They simply found that God cares for them in wondrous ways. And how do we know that's true for us? Because we already experienced it. When we came into worship with those words of confession, hearing God's words of forgiveness, that through the power of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are as freed as the exiles were to go home. You are as freed as the demoniac is to experience God's love. You are as free as ten lepers were healed of disease. You are freed from your sins. They are gone. And we cannot take news like that and simply choose to report it. We've had enough reporting. If somebody asks you about homecoming Sunday, I hope that you don't simply say to them, oh, it was really kind of cool. They had mums out front. That was nice. Someone was experiencing a 40th wedding anniversary. That's always fun. And they didn't just have donuts. They had danishes and muffins and breakfast burritos. And you could report everything that happened this morning and you would be doing exactly what Jesus told you to do, but I would say, let's go beyond that. Let's see what this man who was healed from his demons went and did, and he went and proclaimed in the Decapolis what had happened to him. And this is how this works. You just find find a way of expressing what it is that God does for you. It could be as simple as this. Somebody says to you, so how are you today? And what, you, what are you going to answer? I'm fine. I'm right. Yeah, I'm fine. We are not fine. We are so past fine. We are so much more than fine. We have been forgiven from God. I feel great. This is a message that you can share. Um, uh, let's see, this week, 10 times might be too much. Let's give, you, let's give you three months. Sometimes over the next three months, you find your Decapolis. You find those 10 places where you can proclaim what it is that Jesus has done for you. It could be as simple as uh, walking into Starbucks, because they're really big on, they want to greet you at the door, right? How are you today? And instead of saying, oh, I'm fine, and walking right in line, you stop and you say, I'm a sinner who's been forgiven by God. I feel great. And then you do that with the Walmart greeter. And you do that, you know, at, at Caribou Coffee. You do that in your workplace on a Sunday morning because we have had enough reporting in our world. We need more proclaiming about what it is that God does for us. And you might think, oh, I could never do that, Pastor Gary. I could never say that. I'll bet you can, and I'm going to give you a chance to practice right now. That's why you got a couple warm-up reconnecting questions, because you saw how easy it was to talk to each other. You get like 45 seconds now, get into a little cluster, this is all you're going to do. One person's going to say, how are you? Do not say you are fine. You are so much better than fine today. Then he's going to say, how are you? Your response is, I'm a sinner who's been forgiven by God. I feel great. And then share that back and forth. Go, you got 45 seconds, share that with three people, go. is so easy to do in church, isn't it? Oh yeah, that was so easy, because I knew 
that everyone was going to say it back to me, and I knew what that experience would be, and it would be so wonderful. But I don't know if I could ever do that out into the world. This is why you must. Because when the Gerasene demoniac went out to proclaim what God had done for him, we did not hear that, and the people looked at him as, 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 as if he were the oddest person on earth. That is not what our gospel lesson tells us. They did not look at him and say, that's an that's a incredible message that you're sharing, just please don't share it here. That's not what we heard. Instead, this is what we heard at the end of that passage. After the man had gone out and proclaimed how much Jesus had done for him, everyone was amazed. Oh, people will not be amazed by your reporting. They will just take that as information. People will be amazed by your proclaiming. We have people in this world who are so hungry to hear a message of love, so hungry to hear a message of freedom, so hungry to hear a message of what God has done for them. There are people just waiting to be amazed. The next three months, find your Decapolis. Ten places. I am a sinner who's been forgiven for God. I feel great. Let's amaze the world. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, rise, shine, you peace.